In this problem, we're given the parametric equations of a plane curve asked to find the first derivative of y with respect to x and the second derivative of y with respect to x and then find the slope of the tangent line and the concavity at the given value of t. So we can find the slope of the tangent line by evaluating the first derivative at t equals zero and then we can find the concavity by determining the sine of the second derivative at t equals zero. So to begin, let's determine what point we're referring to on the curve when t equals zero. To do this, we'll substitute t equals zero into the parametric equations, which means we'd have x equals two times sine three times zero, which is zero, and y would be equal to four cosine two times zero, which is zero. Well, the sine of zero is zero, so x is equal to two times zero or zero, and y is equal to four times cosine zero. Cosine zero is equal to one, four times one is four. So the point we're referring to when we're determining the slope of the tangent line in the concavity would be the point with coordinates zero, four. Now let's find the first derivative of y with respect to x. And because we have parametric equations, remember dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So dy dx is equal to, again, dy dt divided by dx dt. Well, here's y. The derivative of four cosine two t with respect to t is going to require the chain rule. So we'll have negative four sine two t times the derivative of two t, which is two, so times two. And dx dt is going to be equal to two cosine three t times three. And notice how this does simplify. We have a common factor of two here. So this gives us negative four sine two t divided by three cosine three t. Now before we find the second derivative, let's go and evaluate the first derivative at t equals zero to determine the slope of the tangent line at this point here. And at the end, we'll verify our results. So dy dx evaluated at t equals zero would be negative four sine zero divided by three cosine zero. Well again, sine zero is zero, so the numerator would be zero. The denominator would be three times one since cosine zero is one. Well zero divided by three is equal to zero which means the slope of the tangent line at t equals zero or at this point would be zero, meaning we have a horizontal tangent line. Now let's work on finding the second derivative of y with respect to x. To find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we want to find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x. But because dy dx is in terms of t, we'll have to find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t and then divide by dx dt. So this is going to take quite a bit of work. So the second derivative of y with respect to x is going to be equal to the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t, which is negative four sine two t divided by three cosine three t, and then we'll divide this by dx dt. So notice how this is going to require the quotient rule as well as the chain rule. So let's begin to set this up. Let's start with our denominator here, or dx dt. We found dx dt on the previous slide. It's going to be two cosine three t times three, or six, cosine three t. And now let's find the derivative of this quotient with respect to t. So we'll have another fraction in the numerator. Let's begin with our denominator here, which remember when applying the quotient rule is just a denominator squared, so we'll have nine cosine squared three t
And now for the numerator, we'll have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So again, we'll start with three cosine three t times the derivative of a negative four sine two t, which will be negative four cosine two t times two, applying the chain rule, that'll be negative eight cosine two t. And then we'll have minus the numerator, which is negative four sine two t, times the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of three cosine three t, would be negative three sine three t times three, or negative nine sine three t. Now let's begin to simplify this. Remember this fraction bar here means division, so we're dividing by six cosine three t, which is the same as multiplying by one over six cosine three t. So this factor here is going to join the factor of nine cosine squared three t in the denominator. So our denominator is going to be fifty-four cosine cubed three t. Now looking at the numerator, notice how the angles of these cosines are different. So we'll have negative twenty-four cosine three t cosine two t, and here we have minus and then a negative here and a negative here, so it's still going to be minus thirty-six and then sine two t sine three t. Now looking at the coefficients, twenty-four, thirty-six, and fifty-four share a common factor of six, so for the next step, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative six from the numerator. So I factor out negative six, that'll leave us with four cosine three t cosine two t. And then because we're factoring a negative out, it'll be plus six sine two t sine three t. And divided by fifty-four is equal to six times nine, so I'll write this as six times nine cosine cubed three t. In this form, we can see the sixes simplify out, leaving us with our second derivative, where our denominator is nine cosine cubed three t, and the numerator would be negative, and then the quantity four cosine three t, cosine two t, plus six sine two t, sine three t. Remember our goal here was to evaluate this at t equals zero to determine the concavity at the point zero four. So let's go ahead and evaluate the second derivative at t equals zero on the next slide. Notice when t equals zero, all of the angles of the trig functions would be equal to zero. So we'll have negative then the quantity four times cosine zero times cosine zero, and cosine zero is equal to one. And then here we'll have six times sine zero times sine zero, which is zero. And then we'll divide this by nine times cosine cubed zero. Again, cosine zero is equal to one, so this is nine times one cubed. Now if we simplify this, notice how we have negative four over nine. So notice how the second derivative is negative or less than zero at t equals zero, which means the curve is concave down at the point when t equals zero. Remember, t equals zero corresponds to the point zero four. So we can say the curve is concave down at the point zero four or when t equals zero. Now let's go ahead and verify this graphically. Here's a graph of our parametric curve on the coordinate plane. We already found that when t equals zero, the point on the curve is this point here, zero comma four. And notice how at that point, the tangent line would be a horizontal line 
meaning the slope is zero, or the first derivative would be equal to zero at this point, which is what we found. And notice also that at this point, the function is concave down, verifying that at t equals zero, the second derivative would be negative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.